she kisses him, he remembers. It's as if his past lives come flooding back to him, much like when we remember who we are by knowing all is love. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of True Love Talks. Today, I want to talk about authenticity. And this is something that everyone struggles with because we are caught between trying to satisfy our own needs and trying to please others. And this is a consistent, constant battle we all have. And you could be on one side, one extreme where you only take care of your own needs and you're extremely selfish. And that can even come at the expense of others. You can hurt their feelings. You can use people. Or it could be on the other extreme where you are constantly giving and never taking care of your own needs. And people talk about boundaries, but it isn't even about boundaries. Because you can declare your boundaries to somebody who's a taker and they will steamroll over you. It's an invitation to them to roll over those boundaries. You put up a fence, they just want to knock it down. So it's more about... The other thing they talk about, and I say they, society in general talks about um, loving yourself. And it's not necessarily about that either because a lot of people still don't know how to love themselves yet will have harsh boundaries. And their harsh boundaries are to protect themselves. So boundaries do not equate to self-love. If you are authentic, authentically you, but not to the point where you are unapologetically rude, inconsiderate. You have to strike a balance between looking after your own needs and attending to the needs of others and being considerate of others. You can be outspoken, you can be opinionated, and on, on one hand, you don't know you're, if you're offending people, and on the other hand, some people would appreciate it and like it, Speak your mind and do your best to be mindful of the things that you say potentially being harmful or offensive. That's all you can do. Because there's a lot of people who find offense in things that are not offensive. And you can't tiptoe around everybody, otherwise you wouldn't say anything. This is in everything that we do. It's in every relationship. It's in everything that you do as, in terms of a job, in terms of creativity. If you create entirely for yourself at the expense of blocking out your audience, you may not relate to anybody. But if you completely cater to your audience, then you're going to be all over the place. You won't stand for anything. And that's in terms of like anything you create, music, painting, sculpture, jewelry, food, anything at all. So you're best off figuring out who you are and being that while being consciously aware of whether your needs are being met or not and whether the people that you're interacting with are capable of meeting your needs. Because a lot of people are so out of touch with who they are, out of touch with their own needs, out of touch with how they feel and even what they think and what they like you can't figure out who you really are or can't figure out what your needs are can't figure out why you feel a certain way and that's very difficult that's very painful to work through because it requires self-reflection say someone who grow grows up in a working class environment who tries to better themselves and learns to speak more clearly and use less slang, swear less, um, lose an accent perhaps, try to differentiate themselves from that mentality and that way of speaking in that class of people because they want to make something of themselves. So they start to behave differently. Well, all their friends in that area of their their life, they're going to try and hold them back. They're going to try and keep them down, criticize them. Tell them that you're you're trying to pretend to be something that you're not. That you are betraying your kind. So there's all sorts of backlash in trying to better yourself. In trying to be something that appeals to you. You can also look at it in the sense of fake it till you make it. 
where people who are trying to become something different and they need to visualize themselves in that lifestyle in order to align with that lifestyle. Because if you're someone who comes from, let's say, maybe your family was good, but you know, you're very poor, very working class, you had to, the mentality of you had to work hard, pay your dues, you know, this sort of mentality. And you're trying to change your mentality and you're trying to get out of that. It's going to be very difficult, but not impossible. You have to change how you think. So the fake it till you make it part, it isn't being a phony, which some people misinterpret it to be you're being a phony. It's a mentality shift. You need to change how you think about life and how you think about yourself and in order to make it legitimately as somebody in a different income bracket, different class. Are they still being authentic? Sure, you can still, you can change your level of income, you can change how you live, you can change this this sort of materialistic stuff and still be authentic. Like the part where you're not being authentic is when you attach yourself to the material part and make that more important than people in your life and how you treat yourself, how you treat others. But also you can lose yourself. You can lose yourself in what you're doing. You When you lose yourself in what you're doing, you identify yourself with the job. Even with what I do, it can be very difficult because I don't want to pigeonhole myself into a place where I'm not allowed to say something or I'm not allowed to be a certain way. And it's very easy to get into that position. And this is why I post videos of myself like upset or ranting or, you know, mad because it's real. I enjoy watching people in the public eye, but at the same time, I get very disappointed that I don't see the realness of them. I want to see them get mad. I want to see them get upset. I want to see them be balanced human beings. Nobody, nobody is perfect. Nobody is happy all the time. Even I've had several friends who are very happy-go-lucky people. I've never seen them upset. I've never seen them mad. I've never seen them get angry. I've never seen them lose their temper. And I'm like, something's off with these people. I would find out later that they suffer from depression. I would find out later that when they get upset, they just hide. And I would say to them, I said, listen, you don't have to do that. I'm here for you. You don't have to be like this all the time. I'm here for all of you. You know, there's been many times where I'm going through something and and I feel like I have no one to reach out to. I feel like um, sometimes with my channel as well, and I feel like, well, I can't go and talk about this. I can't say that I'm having a hard time with this because I talk about this. There's understanding it intellectually and then there's applying it to your life. And we're all going through the same experience And it's refreshing to hear from somebody who's still struggling with it, who's still having a hard time with it, and not just perfect, you know, like these Law of Attraction, Love and Light people. You know, watching these people talk about Law of Attraction and how their lives are so great, and yet they're sitting in a a room with poor lighting, nothing on the walls, bad paint job, the walls are cracking, and it's like, you've, you've mastered Law of Attraction? It's not easy to master law of attraction because you have all sorts of fucked up thoughts in your head. I mean, (laughs) there's, there's been times where I'm pretty good at it, but then I go through phases and it's not so easy. And law of attraction, love and light people will never crack. They will never say I'm having a hard time because they can't. They've painted themselves into a corner because their business is they're trying to sell you on how much they know about law of attraction and they very well may know lots of things about law of attraction and they may very well be able to manifest things but I want to hear people who are having a hard time with it still even though they know intellectually how it works because that's being human we have bad days we have good days not everything is smooth sailing and I don't believe these people who say their lives are perfect. 
One of the Law of Attraction people that I like is Gabrielle Bernstein, and she herself has even admitted that she's had rough times. She said she's forgotten her own tips, which we do. It's so easy to get caught up in your life and totally forget, oh yeah, I I should know this stuff. This is what I teach, and I totally lost track of myself. And so that let's apply that. It happens all the time. So I appreciate that she's open about that and and talks about that. But on the other side of things, I don't want to hear people's woes all the time. I don't want to hear sob stories all the time. It's not about sob stories and the woes. It's about being real. Everybody is entitled to their own suffering. Everybody is entitled to their own issues. Even royalty, even wealthy people, even celebrities. I can't stand listening to people who have no empathy for wealthy people who have issues because they think that money will solve all of their problems. Granted, not having money creates a whole host of other problems, but having money creates a whole host of problems as well. And it shouldn't be that because somebody has a lot of money, they're not supposed to be upset about things that happen in life. They're not supposed to have a bad day. They're not supposed to go through anything in life. They're not supposed to be upset. Sure they are. They're people. They're human. You know, I mean, some people would argue that they're not human, but... There are all sorts of people with money. Obviously, society has made it this way, but because the ideal is that you have a lot of money, the ideal is that you are famous and beautiful, and when you have all the things that society worships and values, how come you're not happy? How come you're still miserable? How come you still have problems? You know, you look at someone like Meghan Markle, who has everything. She's married to a prince. He seems like a decent guy who's a little bit lost. She has children, arguably. She's famous, more famous than she deserves to be. And yet, she's got all these issues. The reason she has all these issues is because she's a narcissist. She has narcissistic personality disorder. These problems will follow her wherever she goes, no matter what. She has what arguably every young girl wants. Isn't that the fairy tale life? Shouldn't she be like over the rainbow happy? And yet here she is making Netflix documentaries about how miserable she is, about how horrible it is. Yeah, on that level, a lot of people would say, cry me a river. But the real issue is that she's suffering mentally from narcissistic personality disorder. And if you can look at that in a human way, you kind of feel bad for her. I feel bad for Harry, but you kind of feel bad for her. However, there's no fixing it which is even sadder. These people are also pain inflictors. They inflict their wounds on everybody. So in that aspect, you don't feel sorry for them because that can be pretty nasty. But my point is, is that all that money and fame and and marrying into the royal family does not make her happy because she has narcissistic personality disorder. People need the room to be who they are and they need to be accepted for who they are. But so many people today are so willing to throw people away if something off color happens or it's like there's a huge intolerance for coloring outside the lines, huge intolerance for being yourself and yet that's what we have to do. We have to be ourselves. So this is a really big topic and it just scratches the surface. And I didn't get a chance to touch upon the opposing perspective where people's 
need for authenticity or so-called authenticity, which could be perceived as an identity crisis, is being self-imposed on other people in a narcissistic way. And I don't even know if I can talk about it here because that's sort of a sensitive issue that triggers censorship. We're talking about the what do you call me epidemic that's plaguing social media right now. So that's it for this video. Hope you're having a great night. Talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now.